So you can be cross-legged, however it's comfortable. And just take a nice big cleansing breath. <sighs> Sighing it out, letting all the muscles in your face relax. <sighs> letting your shoulders soften. <sighs> And as you inhale, let the crown of your head lift up slightly. And as you exhale, let your sit bones ground down a little deeper. That you feel the top and bottom of your spine reaching in opposite directions. Hmm. On your next inhale, you can sweep your head your arms out and up, reaching up, getting nice and long in the side bodies. And then as you exhale, drop your right arm down and bend over to the right, stretching out the left side of the body. So you can take a peek at your hips and just see that your shoulders are in line with your hips so you're not too much in front or too much in back, just to feel the full length in the spine. And as you inhale, let the crown of your head reach toward the corner of the room and your fingers reach toward the corner of the room. And as you exhale, bend a little bit deeper. You can take some movements with that wrist. You can try to turn your heart toward the ceiling a little bit and just kind of explore the different areas here. And if you'd like, you can do that. Inhale to lift your heart and exhale to turn your heart toward the floor so that you can really feel the back stretching out. And just make sure to keep your left sit bone rooted down so that you get that full range of the stretch. And let's do two more breaths, if that ever feels good. And then on your next inhale, you can go ahead and come back up to center, reach both arms up, feel the difference in the side bodies. And then let's go to the other side. So the left arm can drop down, reach on over to the left. And just taking a peek at your hips, just staying with that center line. So the shoulders are right over the hips. And as you inhale, like right where the wall meets the ceiling. So let the crown of your head and your fingers reach toward that on your inhale. And as you exhale, just bending a little bit deeper. And then feel free to add any movements that feel good on this side. So you can circle the wrist a little bit, just play with the, um, the neck, do that, moving the heart toward the ceiling and then facing it toward the floor. And just being sure to keep your right sit bone rooted down this time so that you really get that full range. And you can imagine feeling your sit bone and your fingertips reaching in, in opposite directions. I can notice the difference on this side. Stay with your breath. Really breathe into any areas that feel extra tight. And let's do about three more breaths, whatever feels right. Oof. And then on your next inhale, you can go ahead and come back to center, reaching both arms up. And then exhale, you can slowly lower your hands by your side. You can switch the crossing of your legs. So the opposite ankle is in front and we'll just do some neck work. So 
As you exhale, you can let your right ear come towards your right shoulder. Let it hang out here and you can gradually or move right away into reaching your opposite fingertips away from the ear. So your left fingertips and then adding that weight of your right hand. Whenever you're ready. And now just really focusing on feeling your body stretching itself out. So letting your uh, left ear and your left fingertips actively reach in uh, opposite directions. And reaching a little bit further on the exhales, just letting that space get a little bit longer. And same kind of thing that we just did, you can start to explore by tucking your chin down toward the chest and slowly lifting it up a little bit and just explore the different areas that feel good. If at any point you feel like an intense pain or pinching feeling, just skip over that area and come to a place where it's maybe a little bit uncomfortable, but ultimately feels good. And in your own time, whenever you're ready, you can gradually release the head and roll the neck over to the other side so that the left ear comes to the left shoulder and spend some time on the other side, reaching those fingertips away as you feel ready, adding that extra weight of the hand when you feel ready, staying with the breath. And at all times, just trusting your own body. So. If there's a specific movement you want to stay with longer um, when I cue to move on or vice versa, if you want to move on quicker, then just trusting what your body wants to do. Staying in those areas that need a little extra love today. You can add that movement of tilting the chin up and down toward the chest, just exploring this side of your neck. Hmm. And then gradually, when you're ready, you can just start to take some fluid circles all the way around. So you can focus on making circles with your chin. So lifting the chin. Um, down to the chest, up to the side, and then away from the sternum. Drawing circles, as big circles as you can with the tip of your chin. And you can go about five times in one direction, slowly, and then move about five times in the other direction. Staying with that breath, you can Link the inhales with your upward movement and the exhales with the downward movement or vice versa. Awesome. And then once you're feeling good with the neck, you can go ahead, bring it back to center and pause for just a moment. And then you can Bring your hands to your shoulders and let's draw some big circles with the elbows. Going one direction, exploring how it feels. And then just kind of letting yourself dance a little bit. You can go in the other direction whenever you're ready. And then when you feel even in both directions, you can make your way into a tabletop position. So either rolling over the ankles or shifting the feet behind you. And then just landing with your shoulders over wrists, hips over knees, and the feet are in line with the knees. So they're hidden behind the thighs. Fingers are spread really wide. And um, 
whatever's touching the ground is actively touching the ground to take pressure out of the rest of the body, like in the wrists. And we can move into our cat cows. You can inhale, uh, lift the chin away from the sternum, lift your tailbone to, toward the ceiling and exhale, curl the navel to the spine, tuck the chin, tuck the tailbone. And just keep moving like that with your breath. And just like we've been doing, you can feel free to start exploring different movements whenever you'd like. If you'd like, if you want to just stick with these classic cat cows for a while, of course, you can do that too. But just doing whatever movements your spine needs to do this morning to warm up. And just paying close attention to the shape that your body's making and the way that your spine is shifting as it moves around. You can always close the eyes and just really imagine yourself and your skeleton and just what you look like, what the bones are looking like, the joints are looking like. If you take circles with the hips in one direction, you can imagine the um, the bones moving or rotating in the hip sockets. I'm just exploring all the areas. I'm just staying linked with your breath or staying connected to your breath at all times. <laughs> And let's move for about five more breaths, just doing what feels good. <sighs> Great. And then as you're ready to do so, you can come back to your neutral tabletop and we'll move into our thread the needle. So you can inhale your right arm out and up. Just open up your heart to your right side and exhale. Thread the right arm under your left, the right shoulder and ear can rest on the floor. And breathe into this pose. You can gently push your left hand into the mat and just turn your gaze more toward the ceiling. And, uh, or you could walk your left fingertips forward and get a little more length in the left side of the body and pulling your left hip crease back because it's gonna wanna shift a little bit. So just keeping those hips right over the knees as best you can and then option to bring the left arm behind your back. That feels good. <sighs> Relaxing your stomach as much as possible, just allowing this twist to twist a little more. Relaxing your jaw and your forehead. Relaxing the shoulders as best you can. And just doing your best to allow yourself to twist, allow yourself to open with that. Um, with keeping in mind, feeling the heart try to turn toward the ceiling, not getting there, but energetically trying to reach toward the ceiling. And about two more breaths. Letting it go on the exhales. And then starting to unwind. If you were twisted, bringing the left hand back to the ground in front of the face and slowly pushing into that left hand, unwinding all the way, reaching back up. And exhale, release tabletop. Oof. 
So let's do that on the other side. You can inhale the left arm up, reaching, and then exhale, shoot the red, the needle. Awesome. And same thing on this side. You can push into the ground with the right hand. You can reach it forward. You can reach it behind your back. You can do all three. Hmm. I'm just feeling your right hip crease pulling back slightly, just keeping those hips over the knees. And just fully releasing your head and shoulder into the mat. And relaxing the muscles in the face. On the exhales, just turning your gaze and your heart just a tiny bit more toward the ceiling. Relaxing the lower stomach. Relaxing the muscles in the arms. Just noticing the difference on this side compared to the last. And taking about three more deep breaths here, seeing how much you can release into this pose. Focusing on areas that are a little bit louder. And then as you're ready to do so, you can start to unwind your right hand, bring that back to the ground, slowly push into that hand, bring it all the way back up, oof, and release into your table. Awesome. When you're ready, you can walk the hands forward and melt the heart down and we'll come into puppy pose. And release here. Forehead or chin coming to the mat or a block. <sighs> Releasing your stomach toward the spine, breathing into whatever is talking the loudest and letting the energy reach up through the space in between the sit bones, staying somewhat active in the forearms and the hands. Hmm. About two more breaths here. Hmm. And then you can start to tuck the tailbone down and snake or wave your body forward and we'll come into a sphinx pose with your pubic bone coming to the floor. And the heart is proud, maybe scooching your elbows up slightly. And trying to get your the bottom of your rib cage to be on the mat and seeing if that how that feels for you. Maybe a little bit lower than usual. And just feeling your the back of your neck an extension of the spine. Perfect. Staying with that breath, pressing your pubic bone into the mat and feeling as if your heart could pull through the tops of the arms and you could drag the floor toward your toes and the big toes are rooting toward the mat your legs are reaching toward each other your inner thighs squeezing toward each other slightly and then on your next exhale you can release your forehead to the mat make a pillow with your hands bend the knees and start to windshield wiper the feet back and forth to massage your belly, release the lower back, and soften yourself into the mat. We'll do another nice stretch for the shoulders. Um, I think it's called broken wing pose. Um, so what you can do is uh, bring your arms out into a T-shape with the palms facing down and your forehead can be on the mat. And then just start to roll onto your left hip 
and you can, you can actually bring your right hand to the mat kind of like um, next to your shoulder and start to roll onto your left hip and bring the sole of your right foot to the ground. Yeah, perfect. So does that make sense? Yeah, it's broken wing. <laughs> so that's what it feels like. It's just a nice stretch on your pec. Um, and you can explore if it feels better in a different way. I won't be here for too long. Just breathing into that shoulder. And then on your next exhale, you can roll back onto the belly and slowly shift sides. So extending the opposite arm, bending the left arm and rolling onto that right hip. <sighs> Foot coming behind the leg. I'm breathing into this right pectoral. <sighs> it's about two more breaths. And then slowly making your way back to your belly, releasing. And you can just bring your arms down by your side with the backs of your hands on the mat and turn your head to one side. Maybe wiggle the hips back and forth. Just release the shoulders to the mat. Hmm. Awesome. And then you can interlace your hands uh, behind your back, like right above your sacrum, and turn your chin toward the mat and your forehead toward the mat. And then as you inhale, start to pull your fist back behind you and lifting your heart off the floor into your locust pose. And keep your legs really active here. So your toes are actively reaching back, pushing into the ground, inner thighs reaching toward each other, fists are Keep pulling back behind you. Press your pubic bone down into the mat. One more breath here. And exhale, release the arms. You can turn your head to the other side. And release. And when you're ready to do so, you can bring your hands underneath the shoulders with the elbows pointing up toward the ceiling, keeping them close to the ribs. You can tuck your toes under and either push yourself up through a tabletop or right up to plank and lift your hips to your downward facing dog. Beautiful. First down dog of the day. You can bend your knees as generously as you need to. And maybe just bending them to start anyway and just lifting your hips as high as possible so you can really exaggerate the length in your spine. Keeping your hands and arms active, feeling that wrapping of your triceps, like your, um, like your armpits almost could face each other. So expanding the space between the collarbones also expanding the space between the shoulder blades and lifting the energy up through the space between the sit bones really high maybe taking turns bending each leg walking out your dog taking turns looking under each armpit you can feel nice on the neck and upper back <sighs> Just waking up the hamstrings, staying with that breath, and then finding a little stillness for about three breaths. And just really focusing on the shape that you're making, focusing on the strength of your body. Each exhale, your hips reach a little bit higher. One more big breath. And then you can bend the knees, look up toward the top of your mat and slowly walk your feet 
one step at a time to the top of your mat. And when you arrive, you can inhale to lengthen your spine forward, halfway lift. And as you exhale, release forward fold. You can bend your knees very generously. Let your belly rest on the thighs. You can hug your legs. You can grab opposite elbows. You can just let the arms dangle on the floor. You can let the head dangle, yes and no. <sighs> just notice where the weight is located on your feet and feel your feet spreading really wide. So feel the pinky toe and your big toe reaching, uh, spreading on the floor and the weight shifting just slightly more toward the balls of the feet so that you feel a little bit lighter in your heels. Feel the energy still reaching up through the space between the sit bones. So you're lengthening the backs of the legs, even though, even if they're bent still, I'm just feeling a little bit more length in the spine, feeling the space between the sit bones and the crown of your head. Just letting gravity really take over. Ah, maybe letting out some big sighs, just releasing for three more exhales. Mm. Relaxing the face, the jaw, the forehead. One more big exhale. Mm. And then slowly you can begin to roll yourself up to stand, maybe walking the hands up the legs for more support, or just feeling your spine stacking one vertebrae at a time. Head is last to come up, shoulders roll back, mountain pose. <laughs> cool. So let's do some vinyasas. We'll move through them slowly. As you inhale, reach the arms up, get nice and long. As you exhale, lead with your heart, hinge at your hips, dive forward, fold. Inhale, lengthen the spine, halfway lift. Exhale, let it go. Plant the hands down, step the feet back to a plank. Inhale here. And exhale, slowly lower. The knees can come down. You can lower all the way down. You can lower halfway, chaturanga. Inhale to your back bend, up dog, or baby cobra. Exhale to release. Inhale to push yourself up through plank of table and exhale down dog. Beautiful. Three big breaths here. Maybe you do lion's breath on your exhale, sticking your tongue out, looking up, letting it go. And then bend the knees, look up and step up. Halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up to stand, reach the arms out and up, maybe a slight back bend. And exhale, release to your mountain pose. Hands to heart center. As you inhale, you can come into your chair pose, arms reach up, hips shift down. Feeling your inner thighs pulling in and up toward each other, feeling your lower belly and your pelvic floor be nice and tight. The biceps coming up alongside the ears a little bit more. Awesome. And then as you exhale, you can straighten the legs and dive forward, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen that spine forward, halfway lift. Exhale, fold a little deeper maybe. Plant the hands down, step back to your plank, move through your vinyasa, and we'll meet in down dog. Maybe fluttering the lips, just letting it all go. Awesome. 
On your next inhale, raise your right leg back and up. Just keeping the hips square to start, your toes pointing right toward the ground, maybe even looking and seeing your toes and keeping uh, the energy reaching through either the heel of the foot or the ball of the foot and that straight line of energy from your fingertips through the foot. And then next exhale, you can stack your hips. So it's rolling the right hip on top of the left, opening them up, maybe bending the knee, maybe taking circles with that knee, drawing circles going one way a few times and then the other way, just waking up the hip joints a little bit more. Awesome. Great, and then you can slowly start to straighten out that right leg and level out the hips. And then bend the knee to the chest using your cat spine, shift your shoulders over wrist and bring the foot to the top of your mat. You can always use your right hand to help it there. And then pivot your back foot to warrior one legs. And let's rise up warrior one. So your back toes are facing the front left corner of your mat. Your Feet are in separate train tracks. Your hips are scissoring, so your inner thighs reaching toward each other. And your tailbone is starting to tuck down. So you feel a deeper stretch in your left hip flexor. And rooting down in the outside edge of your back foot. Your arms can be wherever they're comfortable. They can be reaching up. They can be on your hips, heart center, cactus, whatever feels the best. And just reminding yourself of all the components of this pose right now. So really feeling, focusing on your foundation, focusing on what is making contact with the floor. So feeling the, your feet spreading, letting them be wide on the mat, rooting down in the base of your uh, big toe and the base of your pinky toe and your heel. <laughs> and then you can slowly start to straighten out your front leg, reaching into the ground with that foot. You bring your hands to your hips if they're not there and just lift your heart slightly toward the ceiling as you inhale. And then as you exhale, hinge at your hips just like in a forward fold and we'll come into pyramid. Awesome. So. You can keep the hands here. You can bring them to the ground or to blocks on either side of your front foot. <laughs> and just keep your right hip pulling back. So that you really feel the space between your right hip and your right heel. Feel that length in the right leg. You can always adjust your feet, making your stance shorter or wider or both, just exploring wherever your feet need to be in order to keep your hips square to uh, the front edge of your mat and to keep the four corners of both feet on the floor. Hmm. Relax your head, relax your face for two more exhales. Great. And then you can plant your hands down on the mat if they're not there, maybe putting a slight bend in your front leg if you need to. And then step your left toes back slightly, your right toes back to meet it in plank, move through your vinyasa, we'll meet in down dog. Just letting it go, flushing out your system. <sighs> On your next inhale, raise your left leg back and up, keeping the hips square for a moment, maybe looking down at your toes, energy reaching either through the heel or through the ball of your foot, keeping that core really tight and this, um, the straight line from the fingers through the toes. And then as you exhale, you can roll your left hip on top of the right, opening them up and making some big circles with that knee, 
going a few times in both directions. Awesome. And keeping your foot active here is helpful as well. Whether that is a point or a flex or a point, a mixture of the two. And then you can start to extend the left leg, reach it long behind you. And then as you exhale, pull that in toward your chest and step it to the top of your mat. Back foot can come to warrior one legs and rise on up. Warrior one, other side. <sighs> Letting the breath settle. Feeling the wideness of both of your feet. Feeling the scissoring of your hips. I haven't done yoga in a while, too. Yeah. <laughs> like so out of breath. And feeling your tailbone tucked down toward the mat. Uh, Here okay, we are. <laughs> okay, there we are. <laughs> um, so your pubic bone and your hip points feeling like they're coming toward each other. <sighs> your front knee is reaching toward the second toe. <sighs> Just checking in with, huh? Okay, hopefully my voice isn't close. <laughs> and then you can slowly begin to straighten out your front leg and your hands to your hips. Inhale to lift your heart. Exhale to hinge forward into your pyramid on the other side. <sighs> so. Some muscles in your face, jaw, forehead. Net. Let it go. About three more exhales. Hmm. And then you can plant the hands on the mat, step your right toes back slightly and your left toes back to meet it and plank, move through your vinyasa, we'll meet in down dog. Letting it go. <laughs> and you're ready. You can bend the knees. Look up. Step up. Halfway lift as you inhale. Exhale and fold. This time we'll inhale into our chair pose so the hips come down, arms reach up. And then as you exhale, you can release into mountain pose. Straighten the legs, release the arms and pause. You can let the breath catch up with you, let your heartbeat connect back to the breath. We'll move through one more flowy thing before we just do some more seated and deepening. So when you're ready, you can inhale, reach the arms out and up, get nice and long. And exhale, lead with your heart, hinge at the hips, forward fold. Beautiful. Inhale, lengthen the spine, crown of the head forward, half lift. Exhale, fold. Plant the hands, step back to plank. You can move through a flow if you'd like, or just go right to your down dog, whatever you'd like. Hmm. 
make this one a little bit more fun. So when you're ready, you can just step your right foot forward and pivot your back foot to warrior two legs and rise up to your warrior two. So feeling there's a tendency that your left hip will come back like this. So just pushing that in so that your shoulders stay right over your hips. The feet are still wide on your mat. Your back foot can be parallel to the back edge of the mat or turn slightly in if that feels better for your anatomy. And your front knee is reaching toward that second toe. So it stays right over the ankle and you're feeling a rolling under sensation of your right thigh, kind of like it's rotating outward. And really strong and straight in your back leg. Energy can reach through the outside edge of your back foot. Arms are reaching from your heart center. And your tailbone's reaching straight down, crown of your head reaching straight up. Perfect. As you inhale, you can flip your front palm and start to reach up first and then back. Your left arm can be reaching down your back leg. It can be on your hip. It can be reaching behind your back, just reversing your warrior feeling that space from the right hip crease through the right fingertips, keeping that bend in the front leg as best you can. Okay, and then as you inhale, you can bring the arms back to center, warrior two, and then start to slowly straighten out your front leg. You can walk your back heel in a touch and we'll come into our triangle pose. So start to reach forward as far as you can first, and then allow your right fingertips to reach down, left fingertips to reach up, and feeling that pelvic floor be super active here. Your lower belly is very active. And just feeling every limb getting as long as possible. Perfect. So good. Two more big breaths. Hmm. And then this next move, you can make it a little dancey if you'd like. So we're gonna cartwheel the left arm around in front and just shift both arms to be in between both legs as you pivot on your front foot. So the feet are parallel to each other. And your wide leg forward fold. And just releasing here, you can bend the knees slightly or generously. And you can explore different areas of this pose with some movement or just find stillness if that's what's calling to you right now. Hmm. The same thing as in our regular forward fold, just feeling the heels slightly lighter than the balls of the feet, just to encourage the forwardness before the foldness and releasing the shoulders and the face and the neck, letting the Sit bones lift a little bit higher. Letting the torso be a little bit heavier. <sighs> okay. Let's do one more big exhale. <sighs> and then slowly you can Dance your arms over to the left foot, turn those toes to face out and cart really arms up to your warrior two facing the back of your mat. Great, or on the other side. So same little check-ins on this side, making sure that right hip is tucking in slightly just so that your shoulders stay over the hips and your back foot is either turned toes in slightly or totally parallel. And that back leg is really strong and your inner thighs are still reaching toward each other, even though they're, they're reaching toward each other in a way at the same time. So your feet feel like they're kind of dragging away from each other, but your inner thighs feel like they're pulling in toward each other. So you get that nice strength in the legs and the feet, feeling the feet be a wide foundation for you, staying steady with your breath. 
And then when you're ready, you can flip your front palm and inhale to reverse your warrior, reaching up first and then back, letting your right arm either reach down the leg, on the right hip, or behind the back. Just feeling the space from your left hip crease through the left fingertips. Hmm. Awesome. And then you can bring your arms back to center, slowly straighten out the front leg, maybe step the back foot in a touch, and we'll come into triangle pose. So reaching forward as much as you can, and then reaching down. Feeling your lower belly active, your pelvic floor active, every limb and side of your body is as long as it can be. Awesome. And then when you're ready, you can do that little dancey thing to come right back down to our right leg forward fold. Feet are parallel to each other. And releasing. <sighs> Your knees can be bent generously or slightly. You can find movement or stillness. <sighs> And it can always be nice to try to just picture the shape that your body's in, the shape of your skeleton. If there's any movement, what that movement looks like on the vertebrae of your spine, in the joints, in the sockets. And fully release the jaw, fully release the forehead, and just let all the muscles of your face start to just hang off of their bones. Three more big exhales. Mm. Mm. And then this time to come out of this, let's just walk the hands up your legs slowly and just come to a standing position and settle in for a moment. Let all the blood settle. Maybe bring your hands to your belly or your heart or both. Hmm. And then you can turn to face the front of your mat and just step your left foot up to meet your right in your mountain pose. You can roll out the ankles, roll out the feet. We're gonna come, actually let's do one balancing pose and then we'll come to sit. So you can get sturdy in your mountain pose, feeling good on both feet, both legs and Let's see, let's do, let's do tree pose, but we'll get into it a different way. So you can shift your weight more toward your left foot and decide to lift your right thigh so it's parallel to the floor and keep your right foot really active. And if that's too much, of course, you can just let it hover even, but that's the goal. And then imagine there's a string on the outside of your right knee and that's pulling it back behind you. So you open up your hip and you can hold on to your, um, sorry, your right calf or no, your right shin and keep that foot so that it's like it could uh, stand on the floor. Of course, you can hold on to something for help. Um, and you can stay like this or you can start to bring your sole of your right foot to the inside of the right, the left thigh to your tree pose. And Push your foot and leg into each other. You can push your hands to prayer or bring them out to the side, whatever feels best for balance. Keeping your eyes still is very helpful. And um, drawing the energy up through the center line of the body. So you can feel the energy pulling up through the uh, sole of your left foot. 
keeping your left leg super strong, keeping your pelvic floor very strong. And um, the crown of your head is reaching up. The arms can reach up if you would like for three more breaths. And then let's try to slowly come out of it the same way we came into it. So you can slowly release your foot, slowly bring the knee back to center, and then back down to the floor. Oh my God, <laughs> and then shake it out. <sighs> I have not balanced in a long time. Ouch. And then let's do that on the other side. So 30 in your mountain pose, shift the weight to your right side. And just going to wherever uh, you can go today and knowing that that is enough. And so bringing your thigh parallel to the floor, slowly feeling that open up. You can grab the shin here and really open up a bit more. And then perfect. And slowly bringing yourself into your tree pose. Um, and just either put it below your knee or above your knee. Yeah. And then just pushing your leg into your foot, pushing your foot back into your leg, keeping the eyes still, keeping your breath still, keeping your feet very strong, your pelvic floor really strong. And just trusting where you're at today. Hmm. About three more breaths. One side is probably going to be easier than the other. And one more big breath. And then let's try to slowly come out of it the way we came into it. So just releasing your foot, bringing that back out to the side, bringing it back to center, and then slowly down to the ground. Great. Shake it out. Great job. And then you can stand sideways on your mat, and we'll come into our yogi squat. So your feet are a little bit wider than your hips. Hands can come to heart center and bend your knees, hinge at your hips, bring the elbows inside of the knees, and then sink the hips down as you lift the heart and head up. <sighs> Perfect. And then let's do two more exhales here. Feeling those hips release, open, and then reach the fingertips forward. Slowly let your hips find the ground and shake out the legs. Great. So you can bring the soles of your feet together and we'll come into our butterfly pose. And they can be at whatever distance you'd like. They can be in close to the hips or further away. And your feet can open like a book or be pressed into each other. And let's just fully release here. So you can just allow your neck to, or your head to be heavy, your spine to curl, your shoulders to release. And just let it all go. Hmm. And just see the shape that your body is in and allow it to be here fully so that gravity can just take you deeper gradually. And your exhales take you deeper into the state of acceptance. And just Accepting this position that your body's in, not trying to be anywhere else. Noticing any areas that might be resisting this stretch or this stillness. 
And just bringing your awareness to those areas. Just observing any remaining tension in the body, observing any uh, impulse to fidget or to get out of this. And just except for the next four exhales of your life, we're going to stay in this pose. Mm. Finding a little bit of space for stillness. And one more big exhale. And then slowly you can begin to come back up to your seat. Okay. Grab the outsides of the knees, bring them together, give yourself a hug. Hmm. And let's do one more hip opener, opener before we come into our back. So you can uncurl and we'll come into a double pigeon. So you can flex your left foot and bring that shin parallel to the edge of your mat and then Flex your right foot and bring that ankle over the left knee. So you should be able to like rotate your right foot. If it's in, if it's in any further, it's not, uh, you're not getting the most benefit out of the stretch. So your legs can be like this, they can be very separated. Um, and just feel that both of your sit bones are on the mat and just let yourself be wherever you are. This is also called fire logs. I think some people call it, but your shins are stacked and keeping your feet flex is what protects your knees. So keeping that flex in the feet. You can keep your spine long and your heart proud. And you can slowly start to walk the hands forward, adding a little bit of a hinge or releasing the head. This is a very deep and uncomfortable pose, but it's very effective. And Let's count seven deep exhales. So see if you'll be very surprised how much your hips start to open up. And I think a lot of um, the tension in the hips is connected energetically to tension in the jaw. So fully relaxing your jaw and seeing how that Opens up the hips just slightly. And then practicing acceptance here. Also a lot of uh, tight hips is also linked to back pain. So sometimes when we have pain in one area of the body, it's actually more helpful to focus on softening a different part of the body instead of just focusing on that one part. It's the whole body's connected. And the hips and the shoulders are pretty connected. So let's take two more exhales. Okay. And then you can start to come back up. You can bring the arms back behind you. Release slowly. Reach them forward. Shake them out. Maybe windshield wiper. <sighs> this will feel really good after, I promise. <laughs> it's like my least favorite pose. <laughs> it works. Yeah. So when you're ready, you can do this on the other side. Other side, <laughs> so your right shin is parallel to the mat, foot is flexed, and then your left foot comes on over. And again, you should be able to rotate your left foot so that it's the ankles on top of the thigh closer to the knee. And uh, be here for the same amount of time, about seven deep breaths. You can Feel that both sit bones are on the ground. See that your shins are stacked, your feet are flexed, and 
do your best to release. Take deep exhales. Relax the jaw, relax the forehead, relax the eyelids, soften the shoulders. And instead of running away from the sensations in your hips, do your best to sit fully in the discomfort that's happening in your hips. As often we will notice once you pay full attention to that discomfort, it gives the body permission to unfold, kind of like a flower blooming. And just accepting this position that you're in for the next few exhales of your life. Trusting this position that you're in for three more exhales. And one more. And then slowly unfolding, bring the arms back behind you. Straighten out the legs. Oof. Shake them out. Maybe windshield wiper slowly. And we are done with those poses. Come to our backs whenever you're ready. That's it. Oh, wow. <laughs> you can hug your knees into your chest when you arrive and gently rock side to side. Surrender the back of your body to the mat. If you want to take some quick torso twists, you can do that. Let your knees fall to one side, bring your gaze to the opposite. and switching sides when you'd like to. Just doing some final little movements before we come to our Shavasana. You can bring your arms and legs up toward the ceiling when you're ready and just let everything settle to the back body. Let your bones rest in your sockets. Let the full length and width of your back be flat against the mat. Find a little bit of stillness for just a few more moments. And then when you're ready, you can come into your happy baby if you'd like. Opening up the hips toward the ceiling, one final time rocking or finding stillness <sighs> and then whenever you're ready to do so you can release yourself into your reclined butterfly pose or straight to your shavasana getting comfy ah. And just whenever you're ready, trusting the way your body wants to unfold, when your body wants to release the practice and come into your resting pose. As if there were sand within your body, just letting all of that sand rest on the back body naturally, feeling yourself being weighed down to the mat. Letting the natural curl in your fingers and your hands, letting your feet fall where they naturally fall. 
surrendering all of the muscles in the body. Just feeling a wave of relaxation and softness wash over your body. Feeling your forehead expand, the corners of your eyes and the corners of your mouth getting a little bit wider just by releasing. The jaw softening completely and even the brain resting into the skull. Letting the shoulders surrender, feeling some broadness across the collarbones and the sternum. The ribs are soft, the belly is soft. All the energy in the pelvic floor releases and the glutes and the hips. Feeling the full length and weight of your legs, the full length and weight of your arms, and the full weight of your feet and hands. Notice the pulse running through your entire body. Feeling the alignment of your body and the energy flowing freely up and down the spinal cord to every corner and every edge of the body. Mm -hmm. Just allowing all the healing benefits of the poses that we took of this practice to soak into every muscle, every bone, every joint, every cell of the body. And just allowing yourself to rest in silence for about another minute. Of course, if you like to stay longer, please feel free to do so. You're starting to feel ready to come out of this final pose. You can begin by noticing the breath again, by calling air back into the body, feeling yourself fill up with air, every corner, every edge. You can wiggle the fingers, the toes, rock the head side to side. Take a nice big morning stretch, getting nice and long. And in your own time, making your way to a fetal position on one side. Hmm. And if you're ready, gently pushing yourself up to your seat where we will meet with our hands at heart center. And taking this moment to fully and deeply thank yourself for your practice today. And may this continue to heal you through the rest of your weekend. 
May you bring some of this love and light to everything that you do and to everyone that you see. Namaste. Namaste.